Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. And today we're going to take a look at what the Ravens can do to move the ball offensively versus the Houston Texans defense. Now the Texans have a very young, energetic bunch on that defensive side. And what I did was when there was an opportunity that we would play the Texans, I went and pulled the first, I think, significant film that I had. And that was the Week 18 game against the Colts where they had to win in order to get in. And so I charted that game totally defensively and these are some of the numbers that i came up with and then we'll get into the film portion of it so they were in 11 personnel almost the entire game the coach were and so basically this breakdown would be versus 11 personnel because i thought that was significant because we be in 11 personnel a lot of the game whether it be with record whether it be with likely or you know occasionally we'll be in 12 and whatnot but for the most part we're in 11 personnel and so what they saw uh, what the Texans did versus the Colts 11 personnel, they were in two high 23 times. They were in one high 25 times. And they kind of went to one high later in the game when Jonathan Taylor started running the ball on as much as he did. Uh, they played an over front most of the time. Um, they had a couple of other looks. They had under three times or wide threes where both tackles were in threes and then the ends were in fives or if they were in tight ends, they were in sevens or whatnot. Or even a wide nine a couple of times. Then they had this odd look later in the game when they was trying to just stop the run. They would put, and to me the odd look was they'd have a head up nose. They'd have a two threes and then two fives. Then their backers would kind of sit in that in that A gap or that B gap. And that's that look. Um, pass coverage wise, and I only wrote down the pass coverages on plays that they actually threw the ball. So it was only 15 of them. The Colts didn't throw the ball much. Um, played cover three most of the time, cover one sometime. Uh, one time they were in cover zero. And then as far as blitzing, they didn't blitz much. But the, they blitzed five times. Three of them was Jalen Petrie coming in the C-gap. They had one blitz where they showed um, Mike linebacker going to A. He dropped out. Will linebacker came came B. So they didn't do much defensively, and they were in that that – even front most of the time with a three and a one. And I think we can take advantage of it. So let's get into the film portion of that game and see how I think, you know, the Ravens can take advantage of what the Texans do on defense. All right, before we get started on the film version, I want to thank all of the Patreons for being a member of the Patreon. Um, what you do does not go unnoticed. I appreciate it every day, and I take that and try to put it back into the channel and make this channel a worthy experience so you guys can enjoy it. If you'd like to join the Patreon, go to patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Uh, let's get started. Hit that like button also. First up, let's, let's just run this. The use of split zone. Inside zone with the, um, anybody coming backside, whether that be a fullback, tight end, um, I won't say receiver, but not anybody. It had to be somebody with some substance. And so that's what you see right here. You'll see uh, Mo Ali Cox for the coach. He just coming backside to cut off the end man on line of scrimmage. All these other guys just running their inside zone, just running their inside zone. And this is one of the things we're good at. Now, we can run this a bunch of different ways. That's That's the basis of it, and that's what the coach is doing right here. And I'll show you. So you got you got a double. You got this double team right here. You got solo, solo, and he's trying to climb to linebackers. Now, what I noticed was when doing this, look at what the Texans are trying to do. They're trying to shoot Cashman A gap. And get Harris over the back to cover the tight end going that way. Now, what I was thinking was that how we can exploit that is if this guard, whoever this this will be Kevin Zeitler for us, if Ronnie, not Ronnie, if Morgan Moses can get this this block here, if he can get that block there, and the, the and Zeitler don't have to stay here long and can get up on Cashman quick, that's a huge gap there. A huge gap because if he's going to try to scrape with the tight end, he can try to scrape with the tight end and get over top. 
That's, that's a huge hole. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Because I'm saying, if, if Morgan Mo, I'm not Morgan Moses, if Zyla can get this block right here in the middle, if Zyla can get that block because they don't get it, and he's scraping over the, and Christian Harris is scraping over the top to try to go with the tight end, but the tight end is blocking the end, this is a huge gap. This is a huge gap right here for forward and run through. Huge gap. Now, another thing, another thing we could do like this. When you bring this guy in motion, well, when you bring this guy under, just leak him out. Because he can't run up the field like he's doing now. The thing is, you'll notice when they, when they do stuff like this, they can't do some of the same stuff versus Lamar that they do versus the Gardner Minshew or versus Joe Flacco. Because Lamar just run around them. So they have to they have to be disciplined. I don't think they'll run up field like this. I think he'll just sit on his edge, and then that will also give the running back more opportunities to run the ball as long as we block it right up front. So, you know, running split zone is another way to do it because you can also, like I said, leak the guy out. You can insert, you can insert him up in here, and maybe he blocked Cashman and let him hit it, hit it up, up front because again, he can't run up field because of the threat of Lamar running the ball. So instead of uh, bringing Cox out or whoever, whether it be Ricard or whether it be likely for us, you can insert him right in here. And then you have a lead up in there on the inside zone. So there's a bunch of different ways you can run a split zone with, with that guy and, and be effective versus the Colts. I mean, be, be effective versus the, the Texans. All right, let's go to our second play. All right. And I get to talk about one of my favorite plays here. You guys, if you follow the channel, you know it's snagged. And this is a this is a variation of it. This is a variation of it. So what they go, what you're gonna get on this snag is the flat route, the sit down, and the scene. That's what you're gonna get. And because the way they have it tucked in, it's tough because it's it's if if they're in man and and this guy has the back, he's outflanked already. He's out he's outflanked if they're in man. If they're in zone, then the sit down is gonna be ready. Because he's probably if they're in three, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. If they're in three, he gotta get the flats. He gotta get deep. He gotta get deep thirds, and we just gonna play off Christian Harris. We're I mean, not deep thirds. Um, hook curl, hook curl, and we just gonna play off Christian Harris. That's it. But what I like about it, like I said, there's so many different ways you can run snag. You can run like, just like like they drew like like they ran it. But the way I like it, you put him on a corner, and now that's going to take him out of there. Run your little snag with him, and he work. you know, if this guy crosses his as soon as he crosses this guy's face, he shows his numbers, and he can sit there. Now, if he chases the flat route, because you still going to have the flat route by the back. If he chases the flat route, you just hit your little snag route. If he snuggles up against the snag, you throw the flat route. Now, if they're a man, now you got... Isaiah likely running the corner route on, on this guy. So, you I mean, you take your chance. And then you whatever you want to do backside, you can do slants. You can do a fade out. You can do switch route. You can do a bunch of different stuff backside. You can do a ton of stuff backside with this. But I, I love snag. And I think with them having those guys, those those linebackers tucked in like that, I think, I think we can run it. And then if they move the guys, let's just say, Let's just say they bump Christian Harris or whoever, whatever they have out here. So they bump him out here. Now you got your inside zone runs because you got leverage on them. Because the, the tackle can get there. Linebacker can easily, I mean, guard can easily get up to linebacker. Then you got your three on three on this side. So it's, just, it's a leverage game. And we can play the leverage game with them all day for the because for the most point, they're in this front. They're in this personnel package for the most part. They're in this odd or uh, under front. I mean, not odd. They're in this over or under front, and they're in the nickel package for the most of the part that we're in 11 personnel. Let's go and look at some of the plays that were successful that the coach ran that I think we can run also. The 11 personnel got everybody spread out, though. Now, RPOs. Looking at this. So, in this case, the RPO that I was thinking about was this little zone run. And you get a little slant right here. 
Now what and the person you would read in this case is Harris. It's, that's the person you would read. So what should happen is as soon as the ball snaps, Minshew I should go to 48. If he wrong button. If he fits in the run game right here, you throw that slant right there. And it's up to this guy to win inside. It's up to the, to the receiver to win inside. If he stays put, you just hand the ball off. So if he stays put, he hands the ball off. Again, he's out leveraged. That's, that's going to be the, the theme for this week. Out leveraging them because they're young, they're fast, and we have to get out leverage. We have to out leverage them to get our hats in the right spot to block them. Like this one. Like, great decision because Harris moved late. Now, we don't have. Yeah, we got to back up and say we don't have a back that can do that, but yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But look at the spaces opened up on now. Look at the space. The space opened up by the line. They just basically split the defense. They split the defense. Now, because we're so run heavy and the Colts were too, they pretty much they gonna bite, they gonna bite on these runs. They're gonna bite on these runs. And whoever this person is, gonna have to win that. Whether it be Odell, whether it be Zay, whether it be uh, Bateman, whether it be Likely, they're gonna have to win on those runs. I mean, win on those routes. Got to. And I said running a lot. It's just, you know, put it there to keep them honest. Put it there to keep them honest. Because I don't know if you guys know who this is. This guy was on our roster when the season first started. That's Carson Newman. He was on our roster when the season first started. So he wasn't good enough to make our team, but he's a starter for them. And I, and that's, I'm not saying that to be, like, shady, but take advantage of it. Now, does he have some insight on what we do? Maybe. But we're a totally different team from when he was on the team in preseason as to now. And and they're a different team from when we played them the first game. So that's why I ain't using no no tape from that first game. Let's go to the next one. Work in the middle of the field with Isaiah Likely. That's what came to mind when doing this. Because he looked... They're running the cover three. Look at all this room. They're likely we had to work with. Now, at this point right here, this tight end can run whatever he want. He can run whatever he want. Because the, the linebackers are drawn up by the check down from, from Jonathan Taylor. which is, And Taylor is right here. They're drawn, they're drawn up by that. So, likely can kind of do whatever he want. He can go there. He can push his thing vertical. He can push this thing out, which is what he's doing on this play. He can curl up right there if he wanted to. It's, you know, just likely or whoever the tight end is has the opportunity to work the middle of the field and have a huge game. Huge game. Huge game. Just get on that, get behind those linebackers and go to work. Go to work. As long as we threaten them deep with somebody, likely or, or even a third receiver in the intermediate routes should have a field day behind the linebackers. Eight just got to be accurate, which I think he will be. Which I think he will be. So getting behind the linebackers and just you know, doing whatever it is. Whatever the route combination is. Whether it be drive, whether it be... I mean, it's a number of different things that we can run. And I'm sure Todd Munkin got in his bag that, that can feature the, the tight end to get behind the linebacker. Especially on play action. Get a little play action and, and when they come up. And then this, this area right here doubles. This space doubles if you get, get the linebackers to come up. Just use a little motion. That could be Zay. And again, some RPO type stuff. So you, you brought the guy in motion. Now, I think a couple of times Minshew read it wrong. You see Minshew looking at, I think he's looking at the cornerback. The but my thing is, like, he hands this ball off. And there were a couple of times when watching this game, he read a play, this play and a similar play is like this wrong. He had leverage outside because that's that guys can block him. He should come around the arc and block the first thing going. And you throw this ball out here to this guy with a full head of steam, the only person that can catch him is the same guy that was chasing him. And that's 10 or 15 yards down the field. 
Whereas, look at your linebackers. Your linebackers are already triggering for the run. He should have pulled that ball. He should pull that ball, throw it to this guy running this little bubble behind the two blockers, and look what he got out there. Again, you got that block happening. You got this one should come around. Then you'd have this guy, you know, one-on-one with, with the guy that's chasing him. And what's the opportunity of this guy, of him making somebody miss in the open field with a full head of steam? I like them chances, especially if this guy, number one, is Zay Flowers. I really do. I like the chances of Zay Flowers in open space versus, you know, their corners. No matter who it is. No matter who it is. And again, there were a couple of times, like, they would, I'm going to see if I can show you. They would have, they would have trips down here at the bottom of the screen. So, uh, imagine number one already down here at the bottom. So, imagine number one down here, right here. And they'd run their inside zone. And they'd have two people over here. And Minshew would hand it off. And they still have two people. They'd have the tight end. They'd have Pittman. And they'd have Dotson. Not Dotson. Um, whoever number one is for them. Out here solo. But he just kept handing it off. So we just got to, you know, read those plays like that. And take advantage of the numbers. We got to play the numbers game. Y'all hear me talk about the numbers game all the time. And we just have to do that. So I got one more thing I want to show you before we get out of here. And this, this is not on the film. It's just a steel picture that I have. And I, I want to talk about it real quick. All right, so, and I can't draw on this one, so you got to kind of visualize with me. Take advantage of Stingley's aggression. Stingley reminds me, watching this these games, Stingley reminds me so much of Marcus Peters. So much of Marcus Peters. He, like this play right here, they're in zone. They're, they're, they're in the zone look, except Stingley. Stingley's chasing, uh, I think that's, I think Pittman is 14, I think, or maybe Pierce. He's chasing Pierce across the formation. So who has this deep third? It's like if, if this, whoever this receiver is at the bottom of this screen we ran an out and up, who has that? And I see, I saw it three times in this game where they'd run a deep, like an in or a basic, and Pittman would, ch- and not Pittman, Stingley would chase it and leave that, that zone wide open. Now he has, you know how Marcus Peters used to do, he had those instincts. He do have he do have those. But I think he's undisciplined in a few areas. Where we could, you know, maybe run a double move in his area. Not maybe necessarily on him, but in an area he should have been in. Because he was chasing some routes, I think, trying to get interceptions. Because I personally think this is zone. I could be wrong. But take advantage of Stingley's over aggression and his undisciplinedness at times. Uh, make sure you know that 48 is lightning fast. So in your decision and your game planning, game plan for that, um, run at 41. When 41's in the game at edge, run at him. Make him defend and run. Don't let him chase stuff down from the backside. Make him be at the point of attack. Make him hold up versus Moses or or, or Ricard or, or Ronnie Stanley or, or pulling guard. Make him hold up. All right, that's all I got for you, man. Those are the things that I saw in the coach game that I feel like we can implement Saturday to help us um, move the ball and score points on on the Texans. Now, I'm going to take a look at the Browns game. I've already taken a look at the Browns game, but I just want to look at it again and give you some more details on it. And I'll also take a look at the other side of the ball and ways that we can also hopefully stop the Houston Texans because offensively they've been on fire lately. So um, I appreciate you guys for coming through. If you have not liked the video, please do so. If you've not subscribed and you like the content that you've seen so far, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when the rest of this playoff content drop. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Remember the motto, FTMF, film them more film because the film don't lie. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love. Enjoy the rest of y'all day.